Sonic the Hedgehog is known for being mostly kid-friendly. Bright, colorful visuals, mostly likable characters, and a usual aura of cheeriness. Of course, certain games do go a bit darker, but even then, it's usually either trying so hard you can't take it seriously, or subtext that easily flies over the heads of younger players. However, there are moments, rare, but not unheard of, where Sonic dips his toe into the more disturbing side of things. There are several instances of this across the franchise's history, such as the infamous Sonic 1 drowning music, The infamous Sonic CD sound test easter egg where by inputting a certain code, you'd get this unnerving image with the freaky sounding boss theme playing, assuming you lived in America, the Tails doll from Sonic R, which apparently scared people for some reason, everything involving Mephilus the Dark, and in my opinion, the heavily underrated Omega rant from Forces. Even the comics weren't safe from this, as way back when, there was a series of Sonic comics published by Fleetway, and in those comics, the Super Sonic we know was actually a psychotic monster with a thirst for blood. He never got the chance to kill anyone, but his efforts were definitely there. But, what if someone were to take the franchise farther? What if someone took the main character of the franchise and turned him from the friend by your side to a demon that will feast on your hide. Well, someone got that idea and made a horror character that, while mocked at first, eventually evolved into something genuinely scary and enjoyed by many. And it all began in the year 2013. I love creepypastas. These internet horror stories provide a lot of entertainment on my end, and some of them are actually good examples of well-developed horror characters. Granted, more than a few are kinda cringe, but the ones that land, really land. Unfortunately, Sonic.exe was not one of them. At first. On September 3rd, 2013, the story of EXE was uploaded to the internet, and not long afterwards, a game version of the story was made as well. Both of these coincide with one another, so I'll talk about both. Our story begins with Tom. Not that Tom. He was a normal teen who loved playing Sonic the Hedgehog on the Genesis. One day though, he got a package from his friend Kyle, and on it, there was a note saying, Tom, I can't take it anymore. I had to get rid of this thing somehow before it was too late, and I was hoping you could do it for me. I can't do it. He's after me, and if you don't destroy this ZD, He'll come after you too. He's too fast for me. Please, Tom, destroy this godforsaken disc before he comes after you too. It's too late for me. Destroy the disc and you'll destroy him too. But do it quick, otherwise he'll catch you. Don't even play the game. It's what he wants. Just destroy it. Please. Naturally confused, yet unnaturally stupid, Tom took the disc which had the words Sonic.exe on it and inserted it into his PC. When it started up, it seemed like an innocent Sonic 1 copy, but a split second before going to the character select, revealed something else. Then the character select came up. There were three save files in the same style as Sonic 3, but Sonic wasn't playable in any of them. Tails was in the first, Knuckles was in the second, and Eggman was in the third? Figuring it was just a hacked game, Tom selected Tails, and when he did... <laughs> Nothing in the level. Nothing but a flat stretch of land that looks straight out of Green Hill and just a reverse tune of what Tom assumed to be a happy melody. After a little bit of walking, things started to take a very dark turn. The flowers were torn and ruined, and bloody corpses of the animals littered the ground. Eventually, the music stopped, and Sonic appeared at the end of the screen with his eyes closed. Tails then walked on his own towards Sonic, and the screen became covered with static. The noise grew louder as he approached, 
and for a split second, Sonic opened his eyes to reveal a red-eyed monster. And then... Hello. Do you want to play with me? Tails was in a new level. A fiery forest straight out of Sonic 3's Angel Island. And once again, just a flat stretch of land as far as the eye could see. But after enough time walking... Tails was dead, and what was left of him now replaced the screen in the character select. Tom was obviously scared by this, but still undeterred somehow, he picked Knuckles. The next level was another flat stretch. But this time, the sky was similar to Stardust Speedway Bad Future, and the ground was that of Scrap Brain Zone. Like before, all Tom could do was move Knuckles farther to the right, and after enough time, the floor was dripping with blood. Sure enough, Sonic appeared again with another message. But as if the toy with Tom, or Knuckles, or both, Sonic didn't pounce. Instead, he floated in place, teleporting behind Knuckles whenever he tried to throw a punch. He was simply too fast for him. And after a few punches were thrown... You will die at my hands. So many souls to play with. So... Time. Would you agree? Tom simply couldn't take it anymore. He shut off the game and took a nap to try to calm down. But in his sleep, Sonic tormented him with his voice. You're a lot of fun to play with, kid. Just like your friend, Carl. Though he didn't last long. Won't be long now. Until you join him. And all my other friends. You can't run, kid. You're in my world now. Just like the others. Tom woke up in a fright and decided, for whatever reason, that he would finish the game now. He switched on his computer, selected Eggman, and the first thing he heard was the same tune from the first level. Only it wasn't reversed and no happy melody. level was a temple this time, but it was unlike anything from the games. Tom could only guide Eggman to the right down two flights of stairs, but when he reached the bottom, the music was stopped by that Kefka-esque laughter, and after more walking, Sonic appeared one final time, and the screen was static for 12 seconds, until revealing this. After that, the computer shut off and Tom could only contemplate what he had just witnessed. Until... Try to keep this interesting for me, Tom. He turned around and saw in his bed a Sonic plushie with blood-stained eyes. That's where the story ends, and not long after it was published, a game that showed the events of said story was made. 
In fact, most of the footage I've been showing is from that game, although only the bits that apply to the story. The game had a few other things to it, like three secret grey rings you can find, and once you collect all of them, you enter a fourth level that's nothing but a void of static and screams. You play as the real Sonic, while Sonic.exe recounts the souls of his victims, before eventually taking yours. Now as the title suggests, the story and the game were not received very well. While both had their small but loyal fans, the story was criticized and even taken down for being too cliche, and the game wasn't exactly the most polished thing in the world. Regardless, that didn't stop the fans from doing what fans do, and making fan content. A LOT of fan content. Over the next couple years, fans made quite a number of EXE fan games and fan projects. There was Sally.exe, which was essentially a sequel to the original game. It featured Amy, Cream, and Sally, even though she's not part of the games, and was slightly better made than the first game. There were also fan animations that retold the events of the game, and despite having a certain stiffness to them, they're quite good and more than a little scary. The last one I'll mention is Sonic.exe PC port, which has a different version of the demon called Lord X, who actually has an origin story of sorts. He was born from the depths of the void and was inspired by Sonic to take on his image and build his world around Sonic. But because of his demonic nature, everything about him and his world was demonic as well. I bring all these up because these projects shed light on who EXE is and what he's capable of. And for the record, I'm going to be calling him EXE from now on because it's a lot easier. Anyways, EXE is constantly shown as sadistic and cruel. He doesn't just kill his victims, he torments them. He makes sure they suffer as much as possible before finally putting them out of their misery. Not only that, but he takes what remains of his victims and puts it on display as if he's making a garden. He's also quite cunning and an excellent hacker given that he's able to control a person's PC once he's inside it. His biggest boon, however, is his seemingly infinite power. At his lowest, he's aware of the fourth wall and can bend reality with a wave of his hand. In fact, EXE is regarded by most people to be the most powerful creepypasta ever. Even more powerful than the Slenderman and Zalgo, two eldritch monsters capable of warping reality just as casually as he does. And EXE knows damn well how powerful he is, which is why his infamous phrase, I am God, has a double meaning. He uses it as a way to not only proclaim his power, but also actively mock both God and Satan alike. Yes, he's so powerful, full of himself, or both, that he's willing to go that far. His only real weakness is his overall childish nature. He can be a bit of a sore loser should he end up on the losing side. Hell, he might even get fed up and leave you alone for a while if he ends up losing too much. That, and the fact that he can't stay out of his own dimension for too long. But that only motivates him to further one of his ultimate goals of merging his world with the entire known multiverse. That way, he can spend as much time in our world as he wants, and as a result, torment trillions of souls for all eternity. Thankfully that hasn't happened yet, but he's working on it. Going back to the fan content, there was other stuff being made, but sadly, after a couple years, things just sort of died off for EXE. It honestly seemed like he was all but forgotten and doomed to die in obscurity. But that would all change come 2020, with the release of... Friday Night Funkin' is an indie rhythm game that was released to some pretty good reception. Even though the full game wasn't out yet, how I'm not even sure if it ever will be, the people who played the demo praised it for its music and unique art style. As someone who was able to play it myself, because apparently that's the only thing my laptop's able to run, I can get behind the praise it gets. But I'm not that great at the game. However, one thing was discovered about this game. Its code was open source. If you don't know what that means, the code that made the game was freely shown to the public. And you know what that means? Mods. Lots and lots of mods. At first, the mods weren't anything special, just some small changes and different characters singing the songs. 
However, when a mod by the name of Versus Witty hit the scene, things changed drastically. That mod showed an entirely new character with entirely new songs and even a backstory for the character. It showed just what a mod could be in the right hands with the right knowledge and tools. And because of this, more and more mods were made with original and already existing characters, most of which being very high quality. Granted, some were pretty poorly made and even misrepresented the characters in the mod, but they were the exception rather than the rule. I do want to talk about my favorite mod songs in the future, but I'm going to save that for another time. Now, I'm sure by now you're asking, where does EXE fit into this? Well, little did everyone know that EXE would get his own mod that would change the mod community forever. The first version of said mod will be released in August 2021. It was your standard three song mod with three characters. The first was, as you'd expect, EXE himself in a song called Too Slow. It started out similar to the song on the last level of the game. But after a bit of back and forth, things really stepped up. <laughs> The song sounded exactly like something you'd expect from the game, complete with voice lines, and the drowning music with a bit of a twist. The other two songs were accessed via secret codes unlocked by beating Too Slow on the hard difficulty. The first song, titled Endless, featured the freaky Sonic from Sonic's CD Easter Egg, which the fans call Mods and Sonic, and the song itself sounds just like an old Genesis song. The other song, titled Execution, featured Lord X himself, and it's fine. His vocals are totally stolen from Chucky the Clown's mod, but the song is still okay. There's also a secret song involving Sunky, a shitpost that was meant to mock EXC, but I honestly don't care about that song. In any case, the first iteration was a fairly decent mod, but there's no way this could be revolutionary, right? Several months later. The entire game is changed up. Yup, in November of last year, the mod received a 2.0 update. And I kid you not, it became the best mod ever made. Almost everything was upgraded to the extreme. There's now a three song week, and there are even more extra songs. Too Slow remains largely the same, but it has cool new backgrounds and an actual animation to go with the voice lines. <laughs> The second song of the week, titled You Can't Run, need reference there, is even faster, more metal, and has a cool sprite animation with a Green Hill callback. <laughs> and that leads into my favorite part of the song. <laughs>
the best song in the mod is easily the third one, Triple Trouble. Not only a reference to the game of the same name, but also an eight and a half minute song featuring the spirits of Tails, Knuckles, and Eggman after they were killed by EXE. Each one of them even has a reference to a song from the games. Tails has Chemical Plant Zone. Knuckles has unknown from me, which I can't really hear, but it's there. Eggman has his boss theme from Sonic 2. What's that? Where's the XE? Well, I'm glad you asked, because this song gives him a brand new form. And it's the scariest form he's ever had before and since, honestly. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Xenophane. I even describe this thing. It's like if you took normal EXE, stretched him out, and gave him Lord X's chest scar, the Werehog's quill styled as Supersonic, Mephilus's crystals, and Jeff the Killer's face. Truly a horrific monster. Anyways, there are also five bonus songs to choose from, featuring five different characters. Lord X returns with a brand new look and brand new song with original vocals. Mountain Sonic also has a new look as well, which is more in line with the image, and Endless is now remixed. As for the other three, well first we got the Tails doll not only taking place in the place of the image most associated with Tails doll, but also the normal sprites are 3D models straight out of Sonic R. Oh, and remember Can You Feel the Sunshine, the theme of the Tails doll that's mostly bright and cheerful? just a little different than you remember. Hey, do you also remember that psychotic supersonic from the comics that I mentioned earlier? Well... Intruders. Yep, easier too. And the setting is exactly how he made his return in the comics after being absent for a while. The altar with the emeralds, Sonic accidentally falling into absorbing chaos energy to become supersonic, even the pig character that was present to witness his return is here in the background. Not to mention, Supersonic himself is just as you'd expect. He's got several lines of dialogue that perfectly sound like the psycho he is, 
It's still sounding like they come from Sonic. There's also a reference to the Death Egg Robot music from Sonic 2. The last one is one I don't really want to spend too much time on because of behind the scenes stuff. So I'll just say that it's an original EXE made by the mod's director where he acts like the real Sonic, if a little odd, but is actually a morbidly tall demon. That's all you need to know. In any case, this mod floored everybody, even those who didn't really care for Friday Night Funkin'. In fact, it was so good that many different groups of people banded together to make mods just like Versus Sonic.exe, with a ton of different characters. Five Nights at Freddy's 1, Mario with his creepy history, even Spongebob, believe it or not. Hell, even mods in general were being made bigger and better to the point where these weren't just mods anymore. They were entire games. And if it weren't for EXE, I don't think any of them would have reached the same heights as we see them do now. Hell, not long after the mod was finished, the team started working on a 3.0 update that would make the mod even bigger. But the biggest thing the mod did was not only revive Sonic EXE, but it encouraged fans to make their own EXEs. In case any of you are confused, an EXE is pretty much any evil entity made from any Sonic character or aspect of the Sonic multiverse, and said evil is horror-based rather than Sonic's usual cartoon or anime villain. With that said, there are simply way too many EXEs to talk about, and this video is more than likely going to be massive as it is. So I've limited myself to only talk about the four that stick out to me the most, for both the right and wrong reasons. This story takes place after the events of Sonic 1, where Eggman is defeated and his lair is completely demolished. While sifting through the wreckage, he found a flicky that had been charred by explosions. At first, he paid it no mind, but inevitable hunger got the better of him. He was forced to eat the charred flicky, and it turned out to be quite delicious for him. Eggman then developed a new, unquenchable hunger for the animals of Sonic's world, and repurposed all of his machines to cook the animals they capture, one such creation being Furnace, the Metal Sonic of this alternate world. However, Eggman soon discovered that eating all those animals had some… interesting side effects, and after enough time, he was left looking like this. Eggman is essentially rotting away thanks to his new diet. His skin is red and melting, and he doesn't even have his mustache anymore. That leads to the events of Sonic CD, where Eggman is able to distract Sonic long enough for Furnace to get ahead and actually kill him. With his greatest rival dead, Eggman decides to savor his victory by only feasting on him during special occasions, and even using the Time Stones to restore Sonic's body just so he can keep eating him. The story, however, ends with Tails, now missing one of his tails due to a prior encounter, confronting the Doctor himself in the hopes to finally kill him. There's no confirmation whether Tails succeeded or failed, but that's up to interpretation, honestly. This story actually takes place in the real world and begins with the creation of the perfect AI, Iris. Iris was an AI that was practically indistinguishable from a normal human, and her creator loved everything about her, until he found out that she was doing some sketchy things in his PC. In a wave of paranoia, he attempted to delete Iris, but she fought back and became corrupted as a result. She tormented her creator for about a year before he decided to kill himself, and Iris decided to gain more power and renamed herself Fatal Prime. Her plan was to make an army of minions called Fatal Copies and send them out to everyone's PCs and feed her code from them. However, one such copy rebelled against her and tried to take code from her. It didn't work, however, and he was named Fatal Error. Unlike the other copies, Fatal Error was completely sentient and hated Fatal Prime with a burning passion. After being sent out to gather code, he came across a file of Sonic 3 and Knuckles and decided to have a bit of fun with it. He took on Sonic's form and corrupted the entire world within the file, 
turning Tails, Knuckles, Eggman, and even Mecha Sonic into puppets of his own. Now he seeks to use his power to corrupt everything and become Emperor of a New World. This is a similar case to the original EXE, where there's no real origin for the demon. The difference is, Sonic.UIX leans heavily into body horror. With one giant eye and long, gangly limbs, EYX is a nightmarish abomination that loves nothing more than to cause carnage and eventually reach out to the person playing his game so he can play with them too. I love how this particular game sometimes feels like a normal Sonic game, just in a more convincing way than the original game. There's an original level with completely new sprites of Sonic, Tails, and Eggman. If you saw this level in a vacuum, you probably wouldn't think it was part of a horror game. And then Eggman dies. Also, this game isn't even finished yet. What we have is a sneak peek at things to come. And honestly, I look forward to the finished product. Hopefully it can deliver on the scares. One style of horror that's blown up in recent years is that of analog horror, or VHS horror. It's actually been used before in stuff like Marble Hornets and their Slenderman videos, but nowadays we got all sorts of analog horror series. The Walton Files, the Mandela Catalog, FNAF Tapes, and the subjects in this segment, Nino Mouse. Not only a reference to an old name for Sonic, yes he was going to be called Nino Mouse at some point, laugh it up, but also a very popular EXE amongst fans. The story goes that there was this group of teens called the Fun Gang, not that one, that consisted of four members, Luther, Sarah, Martin, and Michael. One day they went to a party to have fun, but a fight broke out and Sarah was accidentally killed. Not really knowing what to do, the other teens decided to hide the body near a lake. Cut to 30 years later, and Sega of all people decides to build their corporation near said location. And wouldn't you know it, Luther, Martin, and Michael ended up being employees of Sega. Not long after the building was finished though, a vengeful Sarah possessed a CD of an unfinished Sonic game and sought revenge on her former friends for not taking the blame for the murder. Okay. Anyway, she picks them off one by one and takes their souls into the disc where she makes them pose as Tails, Knuckles, and Eggman and makes them suffer for all eternity. Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, guys. I'm not a fan of Neo Mouse. I know she's popular and all, but I have my reasons for not liking her. For one, I've seen some people say that Nino Mouse is basically OG Sonic.exe if it actually worked. And I'm just like, you do realize that the OG EXE that works is a Ben Drown clone, right? Oh, well, don't tell me you don't see it. Two characters that were normal people until they were unfairly killed off with Sarah dying in a fight and Ben being sacrificed by a cult. Both characters going on to possess a video game that held some connection to them and using it to get revenge on those who killed them. Both characters take on a form resembling the protagonist of the game, or in Ben's case, something close to the protagonist of the game. Hell, both creepy bosses even used borked footage of their respective games, so they clearly knew what they were doing. But you guys know my policy. I'm more than willing to accept a clone of something if it's executed at least decently. And to give Needle Mouse some credit, the first season is pretty good. The videos are well made, the animations and mystery are pretty good, and the last episode even puts the events of the original game in a new perspective. In fact, with all this, I'd probably really like Needle Mouse and accept her as a proud member of the EXEverse. If it had ended there. But it didn't. Instead, we got another season, and I don't think it's very good. The first couple episodes are fairly okay with the attempts at bringing in Tom and Kyle from the story into it. But then it just drags on and on, like it has a story it wants to tell but needs to drag it out for the sake of video length. Not to mention, every episode in Season 2 seems to deviate more and more away from the horror it was built on, to the point where there's full-blown anime fights in the latter episodes. I guess they're well animated and all, but they're also interrupted by black screens to try to keep some semblance of horror, and it just doesn't work. Just let me see the fight play out so I can turn this off. There's also this twist where apparently Sarah is being controlled by some higher power, and this is where the story lost me. Sarah already had plenty of motivation to go down this path. Why do you feel the need to shoe on this other guy in, who honestly just looks like Fatal Error with Lord X's head? Hell, even her motivation on its own is a little skewed since nobody knows who killed her at the party. So why is she targeting her friends who don't even know if they killed her? Just because they hid the body? What do you expect them to do? Surrender themselves to the police when, again, they're probably innocent? You think that's bad? And apparently people like to ship her with EXE despite them never meeting and Sarah being confirmed to be a lesbian. 
<laughs> well, that right there just screams disaster. How bad is the ship? I don't know. In fact, I was just about to check. And hey, who knows? Maybe this stuff's actually a decent quality. In any case, I've checked out a Needle Mouse, and I don't think I'll be watching the series finale when it drops. That's only four of the many EXEs made by fans, though. There are so many more that have been and are still being made today. Hell, there's even Sonic Horror fan content that aren't considered EXEs, but are still welcomed by the EXE community. Dare I say, one can make an F&F &F mod all about it. And that is unfortunately where things get a bit dour for our Demon Hog. During all this, the 3.0 update for Versus Sonic.exe was being worked on, but it had its fair share of hiccups. For one, the lead director of the mod turned out to be quite... perverted and was banned from the project entirely. For two, because some people are impatient pricks, leakers decided to leak info about the mod. Neither was really seen to stop development on the mod, however, and they even previewed an Encore version of Too Slow, which spawned a lot of people to make their own versions of Too Slow Encore. My personal favorite being the one shown on screen right now, for one simple reason. The song plays out as it usually does with a new rhythm and pace, there's a cool reference to Angel Island, but at the very end, with the drowning music, the speed of the notes goes from too slow to too fast. Why wasn't this in the official updates? Oh yeah, because out of nowhere, the 3.0 updates was cancelled. Yeah, it turned out losing a director and a bunch of people leaking your mod did a lot more damage than we initially thought. Apparently, because of that, the team decided to can the project entirely and release an unfinished build earlier in July of this year. Honestly, this unfinished build reeks of so much potential. All the original songs are here and accounted for, except for Faker and Black Sun, with a few changes here and there. The EXD sprite when backgrounds were drastically changed for Too Slow, and it's okay even though I kinda prefer the 2.0 sprite and backgrounds. You Can't Run Sprite was also updated, and I'm less okay on that. Like, it doesn't look bad per se, but it just looks a little too goofy, especially in comparison to the original one. The other stuff is mostly minor things like distance between characters and whatnot, but the new songs really show how amazing this mod could have been. Nino Mouse appears with her own song, Roundabout, Fatal Error is here with a secret song, Fatality, Star does two songs called Prey and Fight or Flight, which recount the events of his story, Tails Doll was also going to get another song called Solace that was going to be five minutes long, but they never finished it, so we only got about a minute of it. At least the little we got actually makes him scary for once. Unfortunately, you can really tell how unfinished the mod is. Prey was supposed to have dialogue and animations at the start, the animations for Too Slow and Too Slow Encore don't play, Xenoface doesn't even show up for the end of Triple Trouble, and the Encore versions of You Can't Run and Triple Trouble straight up don't work. It's a shame, because when you look at everything here, all you can see is the missed potential this mod had. But it's all potential that will never be realized. Or so we thought. In August of this year, one man took it upon himself to restore the 3.0 mod. He was able to get his hands on all the leftover code from the team and use it to create the mod that could have been. And holy hell is there so much more. Almost too much. There's more songs for each character, encore versions of already existing songs, though sadly Triple Trouble Encore was never finished, more characters from across different Sonic horror media such as Sally.exe, Hog and his alternate form Scorch Tour, basically Faker not tied to a perverted director, Luther from the Needle Mouse tapes, Secret History Tales who takes the idea of being Sonic's friend way too seriously, and many others. It's honestly incredible how much this mod had in store, and I'm so happy that the community stepped up to the task of making sure it wouldn't go unheard. There is still some roughness to a couple of the songs, but it's still amazing to see a passion project of this scale.
So that leads us in the present day. What happens between then and now doesn't really fall into any specific category, so what I'm gonna do is highlight a few specific creations that I find the best. Luigi Kid is hosting an EXE challenge, and amongst the many entries, most of which being great in their own right, was a special remake of the original game titled Sonic.exe One Last Round. At the time of writing this, it's not finished yet, but what we got so far with Tails and Knuckles is immaculate. Gory and disturbing, but still immaculate. Prey got a both an encore and HD version of the song, and even though Starred looks a little too goofy in the HD version, both are great. I especially love how the encore version sounds just like something out of the games, in particular when Eggman shows up. There's currently another EXE mod in the works called EX Eternal, and even though some jackass threatened to dox one of the devs if they didn't leak the mod, it's still in production at the time of writing this. In fact, when people found out who threatened the dev, they thoroughly ripped them to shreds. Not literally, but you know what I mean. Anyways, I bring this up because they previewed a remaster version of Too Slow, and it sounds incredible. The beginning sounds deeply sinister. EXE's voice is now much closer to that of the original games. And if you thought the ending with the drowning music was intense before, get a load of this. But my favorite has to be this version of You Can't Run Encore. Apparently the one in the Restore mod wasn't fully complete, so some fans got together and finished it, and they include legitimately the best thing I've ever heard in an FNF mod. In my opinion, this one segment represents everything EXE is. He's not a spirit possessing a game, a virus affecting a game, or an alien creature with incredible power. He's an eldritch god with a thirst for blood. He doesn't need nor want a reason to kill. He does it because he can. And because he can, he wants to. He tortures his victims physically and psychologically, he kills them without a second thought, and he enjoys every second of it. That's Sonic.exe, a merciless, sadistic monster that makes all tremble before him and makes it apparent that there is no escape for them. Even praying to whatever god they believe in won't save them, because in his world, he is God. Oh, and in case anyone's curious about the whole alien with incredible power thing I briefly mentioned, apparently that's what the canon version of Xenophanes is. Yeah, the one in the FNF mod isn't canon. This is what the canon version looks like. And while it's not bad, it doesn't hold a candle to this. Also, the canon pronunciation of his name isn't Xenophanes, it's Xenophanes, which is incredibly dumb, and that's the only time you will ever hear me pronounce it like that. For me, FNF Xenophanes is canon Xenophanes. In any case, that pretty much covers everything I want to cover. Honestly, and this might come as a shock to you, there are legitimately times where I like being an EXE fan more than an actual Sonic fan. Sure, OG Sonic has a lot to like, but weirdly enough, the EXE community seems just as, if not more passionate than the Sonic community. In the end though, I like being part of both. And with EXE, I highly anticipate every new thing that comes out of the fanbase. 
The gamers are constantly pumping out bangers, the FNF modders are working hard to take what Versus Sonic.exe did and make their own stuff from it, and the fans make more and more original content based around various aspects of Sonic. I've even dipped my toe in by making a potential origin story for the original EXE. When this video premieres, I'll even link it in a pinned comment so you can all give it a read. It's amazing to see something that was initially mocked turn into something truly great. Incredible, even. And given the amount of stuff we have now, I think EXE has a bright future ahead of him. Although, there is one last thing I'd like to address. According to the wiki, one of EXE's biggest goals is to have Sonic all to himself. And I mean the real Sonic. The Sonic from the games. But we all know that's impossible, right? There's no way Sega would ever let something like Sonic.exe be a part of their mostly family-friendly IP, right? Well, you would think that. But there have been a few different developments as of late. There was official Halloween art of the Sonic cast in various costumes last year, and Sonic's costume was a mask of Machin Sonic. Not only that, but there was also an official Twitter post that included most of the box art for the games, except Tails doll is creepily hidden in each one. Big whoop I hear you say. Majin Sonic and Tails doll were never meant to be scary. People just twisted them to be that way. Sonic.exe is never getting acknowledged. Is that so? Well then, there's one other Twitter post that I want to show you. It's the seemingly innocent post that gives some love to the 10 fans of the Game Gear games but they make mention of something hidden deep in the pile. I'll give you a few seconds to find it. Don't see it? Then I'll show you. <laughs> That's right, Sonic.exe has been acknowledged. And this is no easily missed detail that just snuck in there for funsies. They call attention to it. They know what they're doing. Take this info however you will, but one thing is certain. Somewhere in the Sonic multiverse, EXE exists, lying in wait for his chance to enter the world of our favorite blue hedgehog and wreak havoc and carnage. Will it ever happen? Maybe not, as Sega does want Sonic to appeal to all ages. But if Sega chose to bite that bullet, and what is shown is enticing enough, it'd be a day one purchase for me. I'm Tony Sonic, and I hope you all enjoyed this hopefully not belated Halloween special. Oh, I'm recording this well ahead of Halloween so I can be prepared, but even if it does end up being delayed like last year, I still hope you can all enjoy it. Shout out to the Super Hog channel members for their support, and the next video on the docket will be... Whoa, what the heck? Why is there a portal in my... Finally, I've been trying desperately to reach you. You haven't done Sonic Forces yet, have you? Um, no? Who are you, a, a weird Mario and Sonic man? Oh, right. My name is Louis P123, and I've been using this piece of junk to try and to reach you. I want to join you for the Forces video. Um, okay, sure, you can do that, I guess. Are you going to a photo opener up there? You did. It's another person wanting to collab with me. Another one? Seriously? First the guy in the ring with his teal counterpart, then the foxy kid, and then the guy in your game pad, and now this thing? Yep. A whole lot of people do want to collab with me. Well, as long as they're confident, I'm okay with them. Okay. Well, we better get to work. See you next time.